Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to return JSON data in your bottle responses. So returning JSON in bottle isn't obvious because it's not explicit. It's something that is always there for you, but if you didn't know it, you'd probably have trouble figuring out how to return JSON data because it's not like other web frameworks where you have to explicitly say that you want to take some data and convert it into JSON. In bottle, it does it automatically for you. So to demonstrate that, let me create a very basic bottle app. So from bottle import, run and route. I'll put a route on the index and I'll define this. And to start, I'll just return HTML. So I'll return a header saying HTML, h1. And then I'll run the app, debug is true, and reloader is true. So I'll start the server. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to use Postman instead of browser. It's just better for viewing both HTML and JSON, because I'm not too concerned with what it looks like. I'm instead concerned with what comes back. So I'll send this request, a Git request, to my index. So localhost port 8080, which is where the bottle server is running. And I see that I get HTML returned. Not very exciting. I check the headers, and I see the content type is text slash HTML which is expected because I have HTML there. So if I want to return JSON, it's actually really simple. I don't need to import anything called JSON, so I don't have to do this or like this in Flask. I don't have to do anything. I just leave um, run and route there. And the only thing I need to do to return JSON is return a Python dictionary. So let's say name is JSON data. So this is a Python dictionary. So anytime you return a Python dictionary in a response, Bottle will automatically convert it to JSON for you. And not only will it convert it to JSON, but it will also set the headers to be JSON. So if you have anything that's reading the JSON on the other side, it will understand it. So I've saved that in the server restarted. So now let me request the same URL. And I get this JSON object, name and JSON data. And I look at the headers and I see the content type is application JSON. So I didn't actually change anything other than what's getting returned, and then Bottle took care of everything else for me. So to demonstrate a more complicated example, um, let me use lists as well as the dictionary. So let's say my list, and then I'll have one, two, three, four, five. So the dictionaries in Python get converted to JSON objects, and then the lists in Python get converted to JSON arrays. And of course, the JSON object needs to be the outermost um, type of object, but um, inside of that, you can have any combination of lists and dictionaries that you want. So I just saved that, the server should restart it. So now I send this. And I see I have two attributes on this JSON object, my list, which is an array from one to five, and then JSON data is still the same. And the header there is still application JSON. So of course, if you want anything even more complicated than this, just use any combination of dictionaries and lists in Python that you need, and then you can return the dictionary. Just remember that the dictionary has to be the outermost object because that's just how JSON works. But um, inside of that outer dictionary, you can have any combination of dictionary and lists that you want, which would then get converted into JSON objects and JSON arrays. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about returning JSON data in Bottle, uh, you can leave a comment down in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe. So thanks for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time.